everyone. I'm Tracy, and I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I came to celebrate recovery with addictions to methamphetamine, alcohol, and being a sexual abuser. How are you doing today? I've been reading through the Gospel of Mark, and I've read this passage many times, and, and I never caught this part in it before. And, and I did this time, and it was amazing, and I wanted to share it with you. It goes along with principle two, which is earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. So in the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapters 3 through 5, uh, Jesus does some healing, some miracles. One, a man with a shriveled up hand, and he touches him, and boom, the hand comes back up. Uh, there's the demon-possessed man, Legion, and Jesus casts all the demons out of this fella, and they go into the pigs, and the pigs run into the bay and drown. Uh, there's also the time where Jesus is, the disciples are in the boat and Jesus is walking on the water and they almost think he's going to walk past him. He's like, hey, fellas, what's going on? He jumps in the boat with them and it calms down. He's like, what's up? Why are you all upset? So Jesus has been doing many miracles along the way and, and word of it has gotten out to people. So he comes back onto shore from the boat, and this guy named Jairus runs up to him. Now, Jairus is a leader in the synagogue, so he's a big shot in, in the community, right? He's got money, he's got prestige, he's got everything available to him. But he goes to Jesus, and he humbles himself. And he falls down at the feet of Jesus, and he says, Please, Lord Jesus, come to my house. My daughter is sick, and I want her to be well. And Jesus said, Okay, let's go. So they're cruising along, they're walking down, the crowd's all with him. And then here's the part in Mark that caught me. The woman with the issue of blood. It says there was a woman with an issue of blood. She had a bleeding problem. What it is, we don't know for certain. But because it was blood, it made her unclean. That's back in the Levitical laws, back in the Old Testament, that were still held during that time. Which meant that her being unclean means that she couldn't be around anybody she definitely couldn't touch anyone or anything that she did touch. They would become unclean and they would go to uh, one of the priests and have a, a cleansing ceremony done on them, which is a real pain in the rear end and no one wanted that. So everyone just said, hey, you're unclean. Stay away from us. So here's this woman for 12 years. It says that she spent her money seeing physicians and different types of treatments to try and get well and nothing worked. For 12 years, this woman had this condition. Not only was it this physical condition that had to be draining on her, but she was also unclean. Stay away from me. Twelve years where she wasn't being hugged. Twelve years where she wasn't able to hug anybody. Twelve years, if she was allowed into her family's home, she had to sit in a certain corner on a certain bale of hay and make sure she changed that hay out every day, if you understand what I mean. She couldn't touch anything. She couldn't be loved and she couldn't love. How terrible is that? Have any of you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that you were unclean? That you were too, too dirty to be around the people that you loved? Or the things that you've done have caused so much strife that the people that loved you and you loved them, they didn't really want anything to do with you anymore? I know that I have been there. So here's a woman for 12 years with nothing that she has done herself, something that's been put upon her, and she's called unclean. Jesus is walking by, and it says she had heard the things that he had done. Now, this story is written in Matthew, Mark, and Luke in the Synoptic Gospels. It's the same in all of them. Little different details, but the same part of it. She said to herself, if I can just touch his garment, Jesus' garment, I will be healed. So she pressed through the crowd and she touches Jesus' garment. So when she pressed through the crowd, she was breaking ceremonial law. She knew that every, anyone that she touched going through there, even with her head down, even if they didn't see her, that she would make them ceremonially unclean. But she had to do what she had to do. And she pushed through the religious crowd. She pushed through the religious osity of that time to get to the source that she needed for healing in her life. Jesus immediately stops and says, who touched me? And his disciples are like, 
Lord, there's a bunch of people around us. What do you mean, who touched you? And he said, someone touched me, and power went out from me. And he stopped, and he turned to the crowd, and he said, who touched me? And the woman knew that she'd been exposed. So she came, and she fell at his feet, and she said, it was me, Lord. He said, daughter, you were healed. Go in peace, and let your suffering be no more. So I had read that many times before, and I thought, man, how cool is that? That this woman was knowing that this was the source of her power. She earnestly believed that God exists and that he had the power to heal her. She pushed through all obstacles because after 12 years of not being loved, 12 years of not being able to love someone else, not being able to get married, not being able to have children, being told that she was unclean by everyone around her, enough was enough. She needed to go to the source, and she did, and she pushed through. But here's the part that really caught me. When she bowed down to Jesus' feet and said, It was me, Lord. He said, Daughter. He called her daughter. Now, I caught that, and it surprised me. And I don't know why I'd missed it all these years, but I went and I searched through my strong concordance, and I ripped through scripture and the back of my Bible trying to figure out, had Jesus ever called anyone else daughter, specifically to them? He had said, you would be the sons and daughters of God, but specifically to a person. And the answer is no. He didn't say it to anyone else. He said it to her. In fact, all the other people that he healed all the way up to this point in the Gospels, he would tell them, go home or go back to your people, but don't say anything. But to her, he said, daughter. And then he said, your faith has healed you. Suffer no more. Again, Jesus didn't do what he'd commonly do. All right, you're healed, but sin no more. He didn't say that to her. She didn't sin to have this problem. And many of you haven't either. Things have happened in your life. People have hurt you and caused problems in your life, which worked into other issues in your life. And you need the healing from Jesus Christ. Are you willing to push through? Push through the religiousity. Push through whatever teachings that you may have heard that Jesus will only heal those who are shiny and clean. Only those with good intent. Only those with the purest of hearts. Are you hungry? for the saving grace of God in your life? Are you believing, earnestly believing, that God can heal you? That he knows you? That he knows you exist? That if you reach out and touch him, he'll say, daughter or son, suffer no more. That's what God does. He really does that. In Celebrate Recovery, we try very hard not to be overly religious. Even though there's scripture all through Celebrate Recovery. We go by the fact that Jesus is the one that heals. We're not counselors, and we're not therapists, and we're not going to try and fix you at Celebrate Recovery because we trust in God. We earnestly believe that God does exist and that he does have the power to heal us and give us our recovery. I hope that you can have that understanding too. And whatever you've been struggling with, if you've ever felt unclean, unworthy, if you've ever been ashamed of the things in your past, whether you did them, created them yourself or they were done to you, push through the crowd. Push through to the one who loves you more than anyone else. Push through and get that healing and hear those words from Jesus. My child, your faith has healed you. Go and suffer no more. My name is Tracy, and I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I came to celebrate recovery. I pushed through, and I touched the robe of Jesus. And I know that this story is true. But let him tell you, child, my son, my daughter, because he loves you that much. I'm Tracy. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I love you, and God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So push through the crowd and get to Jesus. Have a great day. Bye-bye.